In August 2019, the Nigerian government announced the partial closure of land borders in the country and was further moved to a full closure in October. Reasons for this, the government said, was due to smuggling of lack and lack of adherence to ECOWAS treaty by neighboring countries. Of particular interest to the government, however, was the smuggling of rice into the country. I have with me here in the studio Anand Pajatia. He is the CEO of Stallion to speak on the impact of the closure on local rice producers. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. Thank Certainly. you. Certainly. All right, so I would like to know from the perspective of a producer, prior to the closure, what was the experience like for producers such as um, your so company? So prior to the closure, the procurement of paddy itself was very, very difficult, you know, because the farmers were not very encouraged to produce paddy because there, was, there were no takers for the paddy because the imported rice, the smuggled rice, was much cheaper than the local rice, you know. So the imported rice at that time, we are talking, is selling at 12,000 naira per 50 kg bag, whereas the local rice is not even able to produce at around that price, right? So it was very difficult to compete with an imported rice, which people presume to be much better, you know, long grains and all. So there was a lot of discontentment among farmers because of all this, and so the procurement itself of paddy was very difficult. So prior to border closure, the local rice was not able to compete with the imported rice, both on pricing and on quality perception that was there. And so in terms of, in all honesty, in terms of quality, the locally produced rice, would you say that they are of higher quality and standard when compared to those that have been imported? And so what's the quality check of those ones that have been imported anyway, if there is? See, so in <coughs> terms of quality it's it's a lot of perception also there because the there's uh, the local rice tends to be more sticky but it's very healthy and i think uh, we have to keep on uh, working on these seeds that we are using to make it better but uh, in terms of quality they, i i won't it would be wrong to say that one is better than other okay. uh, the local rice is pretty good you know we're more healthy you know people do understand that now so uh, it's it's just the perception about that imported rice is more healthier or better than the local rice, which I don't agree to. And in terms of your production procedure there at Stallion, is everything done um, locally? 100% locally. 100% locally. <coughs> so we are in touch with 40,000 farmers across 16 states in the country where we are procuring paddy directly from the farmers. You know, we are working with, directly with the cooperatives and the farmers. And we have uh, collection centers across the country where we okay. go and buy paddy from them and then, uh, you know, uh, process them at our uh, mill in Kano. It's one of the largest mills in the country in Kano. And uh, we produce, uh, we mill this uh, paddy at our, uh, at, our, at our mill in Kano. 100%, all the rice that we are producing locally is 100% done locally. But now when you take a look at what has happened post border closure, what has been the effect on local rice manufacturing producers in the country? I think it is an amazing, it's a boon for them because after the border closure, the demand for local paddy grew significantly, right? So the farmers had a very good reason to put a lot of investment in that. So the, uh, the, there was a lot of paddy there in the market, right? And the, the, the paddy prices also went up because they were wanting to okay. make money. So we saw from August till uh, October, uh, mid of October, there was a serious increase in price. You know, everybody was talking about the price increase that we saw after the border closure and that became the talk of the town. And there were a lot of uh, things that... So we're talking about how much for a bag of rice? So it, it grew take. from, let's say, we were talking about 13, 14,000 naira per bag when before the border closure, which went up to, even it was starting to touch around 25, 27,000 naira per 50 kg bag. But then I think uh, the CBN and the government came into action. We had a lot of uh, discussions with the stakeholders, right? And everybody, because the idea is it's a very good move to close the border. And it's a, it's a collective decision of a nation. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that it's not about uh, just uh, that close the border. This is important for the future of the nation because how do we ensure that a country which can grow so much of paddy, which can grow its own rice, has, is having to import it. You cannot just go on and have these people compete with the best in the world, which are in the Thailand and the Vietnamese, because they have been in this business for quite, quite long. Sure. And they, they are very, very far ahead in the game. So we need some protection for our local farmers to compete with them. And you know, if you don't take immediate steps, and this is one of the most important steps taken, that we have to protect them some way, right? That, okay, here we are, 
we close the borders, we are protecting it, grow paddy. So if they start making money in the process, that's when the more investments will go into the system. So the paddy, in, after the border closure, the farmers have started getting, uh, you know, uh, more interested in, 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 interested in growing paddy because they're making money about, uh, around it. More paddy is available in the market, so rice producers, the millers are very happy because they can procure paddy, which was one of their big pain points. They are not able to procure paddy, so paddy is available. Okay, the prices are going up, and that's when all the stakeholders came together, uh, you know, okay. along with Ripan, and they said that see, we have to be very careful. We should not make, we should make good of this situation rather than bad. You know, that let's not just get it out of our hand that the price can go anywhere. So all of us decided together that okay, we need to ensure that the prices are kept in check. Right, okay. so that it it, is, it doesn't get out of the hand of a poor p person, you know, mm -hmm. because it was touching twenty five thousand. But I think with a lot of intervention from the government, from everybody, a lot of like minded thought in 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 for the good of the nation, we have I think been able to ensure that uh, the distributors are getting it in the range of around fourteen thousand, fourteen thousand five hundred naira, and the end consumer is getting it in the range of seventeen thousand, seventeen thousand five hundred naira from the stores, which is which is I think a very very good move, and which has checked the check the inflation that we were seeing at the beginning because people were talking about it will touch 50,000 Naira, mm -hmm. 70,000 Naira and what all talks were going of on. Of course that was not going to I happen. I think an amazing work was done uh, by the key stakeholders to check it. Well, in term, long term now, what should we be focusing on to ensure that this is a very sustainable process and at the end of the day everyone becomes a winner. It's not that just the farmers are winning and then the consumers are complaining about the pricing. Yeah, very true. So, <coughs> see, we have to ensure that we, first of all, train, educate our farmers. The cost is high, that's why the price is high, right? Now, we have to see how we can better uh, manage the logistics, how to get paddy from the farm to the milling centers. So a lot of work needs to be done on power sector and logistics side mm -hmm. to ensure that the cost itself goes down, right? It's not about that they are making a lot of profit, but they need to make some money. Earlier they were make, maybe not making any money, that's why they were not growing. If they've started making money, that money, that profit can go down if we are making better uh, investments in logistics of the country, okay. in, the, in, 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 we, in education of the farmers to use the better seeds. So we are working a lot with farmers. You know, what, as Dalian, what we do is we're working with the farmers very closely, giving them right quality of seeds. Fantastic. Because a better seed is a better, better uh, you know, uh, harvest. And also training them on irrigation and a lot of other things. So a lot of work is going on in, in that sector as well. But I think government has to step in in terms of logistics, in terms of power uh, that, the, that the farmers need, the millers need. So all those work has to be done on the infrastructure side to ensure that it, it becomes sustainable. Otherwise, uh, border closure can work for some time, but it won't be sustainable if we don't take the time now to invest in the right, uh, you know, get, gain, gain the confidence of the people True. that we are here to find a solution, not to just uh, do it for once and try and show it. So I think it's, it's a long game, but I think it's very, very critical, and I'm, I, I don't want to mince my words on this, that it's going to be very, very difficult in the short term, right? Uh, but this is where farmers will gain a lot. They will get the, if they become more, you know, richer in the process, they will have means to invest in sure. power in other things and so that they will have better means to the bottlenecks that they are currently yes. facing so and w w uh, same way millers will get more uh, accustomed to the local rice now people are starting to eat local rice they are they are saying okay that was their perception but in the, I like that you also mentioned that it's very healthy healthy it's very healthy <laughs> and people are getting to, uh, beginning to eat local rice earlier people who had not taken uh, tasted local rice are today eating it so we have sold a lot of local rice uh, i think record local rice has been sold in the last two I three think months. one challenge a lot of them usually have is the purity of the rice they would say oh that sometimes you find sand so what's been done so yes so now I think that's where the production uh, uh, efficiency and the quality matters. So a lot of our uh, millers are, uh, you know, uh, home growers, basically. Like, I would say not that integrated plants are out 1.1, 1.2 million tons in the country. Balance are cotton, uh, cottage industries, right? So I think, again, a lot of education needs to be done. And I believe this is a process where once they start making money, then they will start investing in equipments and, and, and technology, and things will get better. We cannot expect them to do it right away. They will only do it when they see long-term future for them, when they know that, okay, this is here to stay. They will start making investments in better equipments, better technology to ensure that the quality of rice that is being Certainly. milled is better.
or finally, what should we be expecting in 2020? So I think 2020, uh, uh, I hope this border closure continues. So honest. I think it's important because uh, I was talking to some people and there is no way you can stop an economic arbitrage. Right. So if there is an arbitrage for people in the neighboring countries to bring rice there and sell here, if we don't take stern actions and stern measures, you won't stop it. So economic. So that's where I think we have to be very uh, stern, very clear in our head what we need to do. That's and great. what good has been done in the last three, four months, I think we need to take it to a point that we have clear agreements with the neighboring countries that this is what we need of them before we before we un undo this situation. All right, thank you very much. Because of thank time, you. that's all we can have. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank, you. thank, thank you, you very much.